Right, this is going to be a DVD and Blu-ray update. It's been a while since I've done one, and I just realised the backlog. I've got I've got stuff back from oh, September, October time. I didn't realise how much stuff I had. So I'm going to do this is a mixed bag. There's loads. There's some Criterion's. There's a lot of action here, and I'll get through the DVDs first. Some of them are good. Some of them not so good. This is a not so good one. This is a sci-fi movie marathon from Shout. Uh, what do we have here? We've got Arena, Eliminators, American the Year 3000, and The Time Guardian. <sighs> what did I watch? I watched The Eliminators and that was bad. Arena was worse. <laughs> it wasn't even good bad, it was bad. It, it kind of stunk. I didn't... Did I, did I watch any of the others? I don't think I could bear it. Yeah, they were cheap, and you know, I mean, it's, they are what they are. Um, this film, I was gonna, I was gonna pick up this film for a while, and I heard Colin um, Deuce um, Lives talking about it. It's uh, No Blade of Grass. Really good film. Really, really enjoyed this. Watched this ages ago, and I thought I'd turn it in an update. Uh, environmental catastrophe, the choice of civilization, the family. Trying to get to his brother, Nigel Davenport, totally underrated English actor, absolutely brilliant. Nasty in place, it's a nasty one. It's great, for, it's a really, really good, sort of apocalyptic kind. Uh, not really, a, sort of just on the edges of, of the, not apocalypse, but um, yeah, an environmental catastrophe, that's probably the better word, civilizations collapsing, they're trying to get out of London. It's really good. Um, really, really enjoyed that film. Uh, this is a TV series, this was only on VHS for ages and it's came out I think within the last year um, looking after Jojo, uh, it's a complete series of this Robert Carlyle who I tell you man, he's a great actor, he just kind of fell off, it was when he did that Bond film it just, just killed, his, killed his career and you know he wasn't that great in it but the film on the whole wasn't that good anyway, not in my opinion it wasn't um, but yeah, he's a great actor, man. You know, it, it, I, I, I always consider his role in Ravenous one of the best. I think he's, I love that film. I think he's fantastic in it. It's Colonel Ives, uh, Colquhoun. Um, yeah, now this film, I had the, okay, had the Anchor Bay DVD, hard to get out of print, and it had um, sort of an Anglophile Scottish. They didn't have the original Glaswegian accents. This version has the this the original has the original Glass um Norwegian accents from the T V cut. It's a sense of freedom and I absolutely adore this film. Uh I think it's one of the best British films, one of the best British films ever made. About Jimmy Boyle, his time in uh, prison and how the guards are trying to break him. You know, he's not a particularly nice guy, he's vicious. I mean, I always consider the scene in this uh when he's got the um, the milk bottle and just no, hang on, did he do it with a knife? No. Slashes a guy's face at his front door and the blood falls into the milk, the broken milk bottle. And just casually gets back into his car and he says to another guy, was that the guy? Almost like he just doesn't care who the hell it was. Um, I love the feel of it. It's a real nasty feel, especially when uh, when he gets attacked by a rival gang and they really do a number on him with um, hammers. It's, it's a great, directed by John McKenzie, uh, did Long Good Friday, it's really great. I think David Heyman's performance in this is absolutely one of the one of the best, so underrated. If it, if it was done now, he'd be just inundated with awards. It's it's a brilliant film, I can't recommend it enough. It's good to see it with like the orig original kind of like more street class wage and really good. I picked up some Korean, f oh not Korean films, um, Hong Kong films. Wheels on Meals, uh, Jackie Chan, Sammo Hung. Uh, it's a fun one, I think set in... Barcelona. Now we've got a fight in this one with uh, what is it? Is it Benny Akito? It's one fight in this. That's not bad. It's not a bad fight that one. But the main, um, the main Benny Benny Akito. Sorry, not Benny Akito. Fuck my man. <laughs> Benny Akito. Uh, the fight in this in Dragons Forever. Oh man, this is such a good film. Uh, the fight at the end is just amazing. The whole set piece at the end is just brilliant. It's it's one of the uh, one of the best, really up there among Hong Kong action films. It's it's just, uh, and I've seen so many, but it's uh, I, I you know I only picked up this recently, which is weird. I'd seen I'd seen parts of it before, and then I realised that I hadn't got it. It's it's great. It's just the fight at the end's fantastic. The whole sequence at the end is brilliant, and another brilliant film. This is a uh, from Warner Archive. It's one of my favourite Sammo Hung films. 
uh, pedicab driver I can't begin to some of the set pieces in this and the are oh, the ending is just because it, it, it has a sort of a jokey feel to it but it's just amazing choreography and then it gets all serious near the end it's just a great set piece near the end so funny so great it's it's a uh, it's great. I love Samahung, and this one, this this is an absolute gem. Honestly, if you want one of the best Samahung performances, it, it, it's a great film. Right now, I'm going to get on to this is a massive amount of action films. Right, first up, and I think a misunderstood one. Look, it's it's not going to stand up there with most Carpenter films, but Escape from LA. Uh, it's look, it, it, it's it's no Escape from New York, but you know, it, it's a lot of fun, and I know it's absolutely fucking upset <laughs> when even Fonda on the air uh, oh Christ they're surfing I mean some of it's just just contemptible you know what I mean but uh, you gotta just go with it and it's got a good I like the villain in it he, he does a good turn um, I'm not sure the actors now I haven't really seen him much but it's you know a lot of a lot of actors turn up in it and yeah, this is a real good it's a good one it's, it's enjoyable uh, we've got Runaway with Tom Selleck a futuristic one uh <laughs> Gene Simmons is the villain in this. It's a great <laughs> I won't spoil it, man. It's just the ending really makes me laugh. It's almost like the, the final death throes of, uh, of Gene Simmons. It's it's a fun one, man. I, I, I really enjoyed this. I, I like Tom Seddick a lot, so I enjoyed that. We have here um, uh, Midnight Run. De Niro and Charles Grodin. I, one of my... Such a favourite of mine. This is a great film. Really underrated, probably De Niro performance. Uh, and Charles Gurney's great in it as well. It's a great film. I think it's one of those films, you know, you just it, once you've seen it, you just can't not like Midnight Run. Now, this is another upgrade. A lot of these are upgrades here. Um, I picked this up from Spain. Action Jackson, Carl Weathers, Craig T. Nelson, um, oh, Sonny Landham turns up in this as well. That's a, that's a really funny set piece when you get to throw from one window through another one. I haven't seen this in ages, man, and I want to check it out. Look, you can't not like Cole with this, you know, just a lot of fun that. We've got <laughs> Passenger 57 again from Spain, pick this up dirt cheap. Really underrated action. I love Wesley Snipes. I absolutely adore Bruce Payne as Charles Rain in this. He's just <laughs> so many funny lines. There is, I, I absolutely love Bruce Payne, you know, um, oh, Brian Bosworth in One Tough Bastard. He's so good in that. Oh. I can't think of his name in that. Oh God! I normally good with kind of like he's, you know. I know he's Charles Ryan in this. Can't think of his name. But yeah, this is this is a good one. Doesn't go on long either. Um, Tom Sizemore more stars in it as well. Some some great throwaway lines. Yeah, just a great one. Just like kind of die hard in a plane really. Uh, got lock up. Stallone, Sonny Lanham turns up in this as well. Sonny Lanham, real beast. I really like Sonny Landham and just the way he towers over Stallone in this as well in the, in the, the yard. It's a good film. Another film I need to revisit. Another real favourite of mine because I'm a massive fan of... I like Michael J. Fo J. Fox. I love James Woods. I absolutely adore James Woods. I love him. I absolutely love him. Hard way. Such an underrated little actioner from the early 90s. <sighs> Stephen Lang is a good villain in this as well. Good set piece near the end. Just a good one. Just a good one from well, well written. Just good, good dialogue, just good acting, good film. Hard to kill Seagal. Seagal in his early years, as we know. Just something special about his films. I consider just... Um, look, this is no Mark for Death or Out for Justice. Two of my favourites. But this is very underrated. This is this has the fuck you and die line, which I absolutely love. Um, the only tragedy is with this is it was... Um, I think it was pre-cut part of it. Um, Bill Sadler was meant to die pretty horrifically in the film and they they changed it I don't really know why they changed it it would have been it, it lacks that satisfying element at the end you really would like to see Seagal really beat up Bill Sadler at the end and kill him but you know, you know to no avail but you know just, just seeing Seagal wake up from a coma is <laughs> covering this He's got, oh god he's got the stupid wig on and the beard and he's just kind of almost rowing the hospital gurney into the elevators oh man this is funny I, 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 Hard to Kill is a good one just not as good as some of the others but it's still great got a triple pack of uh, John claude Van Damme got Cyborg Death Warrant Death Warrant's classic Double Impact uh, so so Double Impact now Cyborg really underrated one the guy who plays the villain in this I'm not sure what his name is. It's all over those two names there, Vince. I'm not sure. I think he was a surfer from 
was he a surfing champion from Australia or New Zealand? He's he's great in it. He's, it's such a funny ending. It's, it's some good go some good violence in it as well, and just it's it's good, very enjoyable. Uh, I got Bloodsport and Time Cop. Love Bloodsport. Bolo's in that. Time Cop. Very underrated. Fucking ludicrous, mind. You've really got to... Oh, it's one of those ones that when you're watching Back to the Future and the sort of the space-time continuum and you... Oh, you, you, sometimes you're thinking, this doesn't make any fucking sense. But you just got to go with it, you know. It's And Ron Silver, uh, you know, Lord rest him, he does a great turn in this. Just he's... Sometimes you need a, an action with a good... Sometimes, you know, it doesn't have to be the best action film. It's like the specialist good film but without James Woods it would probably fall flat Ron Silver's that to this really holds it together he plays kind of dual roles and he's, he's really good a rough real favourite of mine as well I picked this from Australia I had this on DVD um, next to Kin Patrick Swayze just adore Patrick Swayze Liam Neeson's great in this as well Patrick Swayze is there it's on the Appalachians and I think he's, he's from Kentucky in this originally um in the streets of Chicago, his brother dies, some of his family get involved with Liam Neeson, the ending's just fucking ludicrous but brilliantly funny, it's it, it's just so entertaining, I absolutely love Next to Kin, it's a great film, another Patrick Swayze one, and I'm really surprised I haven't upgraded this, I quite like these German covers as well, with the, like the, the Red Amore, um, Roadhouse, absolute classic, there's nothing, there's nothing else, you are in, you are in two camps, you either love Roadhouse, or you haven't seen it yet and then you'll love it so it's okay so well, well, once you get there you'll be you'll be fine if you don't like Roadhouse I, I, I maybe just watch it again and then you'll you'll finally just see the absolute amazingness of it <laughs> just look I love my well, Sam Elliott in this Tay Funk as well if you're a wrestling fan Tay Funk turns up in this well I love Tay Funk oh, it's, just, it's just brilliant I love it love love Roadhouse we got Commando but this is from Germany I've been wanting to try to get the steelbook from Japan for a while but it's just so damn expensive I thought oh fuck it I think I'll just get this and you know, commanders are just, oh, just Arnie. I just love Arnie, you know. And he just, you know, just commander. Just not, there's nothing else to be said. And I thought I'd pick this up. I, I, I wanted to pick up the, was it the Zavi Steel book of this? And I love the the original cover art of 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 this film. Um, it's it's just a classic. And I'm a massive fan of Robert E. Howard. And yeah, look. I like I like Arnie as Conan. I, I always have. You know, is he exactly the Conan in Robert E. Howard's works? No, but he does a good job. This has got both films. The French version, um, French edition of it. Look, the second film, forget about it. It's just contemptible. Just fuck it. Just 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 a shit film. It's not worth your time of day. But the first film, I absolutely love it. I consider the score by Basil Polyderis is just one of the best scores ever committed to anything. It's just it's beyond belief how good it is it's just wonderful Basil would like to do um, Robocop and that's great but this is something special I love the first Conan it's it's fantastic it's um, love Bill Smith as well as Conan's dad you couldn't have picked a better better dad for Conan at the beginning it's uh, it's just great and, and you know if, if, I, I, I love the uh, the work for Robert E. Howard and I don't know man not, you know I see a lot of Arnie there with the Conan. I, I, I do, you know. If if you, if you read the, the stories, you you know you'd, you'd see there's um, a lot of similarities. Well, what should I show here? There's a mixture. Oh, no, no. I tell you what, I'll show. I've got a few more action films. I've got a Norris Paul. Mission Action Two, which was originally filmed before the first one, and then they showed the first one first. So this is a flashback one, and it's a good one. Look, just yeah, look at the back of Chuck. You know it's going to be good. Chuck in a <laughs> Vietnamese prison camp. The guy, oh god, what's his name? The uh, oh, the evil Vietnamese guy. What's his name? Is it, is it Sun Teco? I know he's not Vietnamese. I'll tell you that now, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he isn't. But he's great, and it's just just a great one. I, I've, I think the first missing action is the weakest. And I'm going to show that. I'm going to say. Because I I always consider the third film so underrated. I, I <laughs> some of the the violence is great in it. The oh, there's such a, I, I love to see when that um, Vietnamese soldier trying to rape the young girl and what Chuck does to him is so ah oh, just just one of a real favourite of mine. And the villain in this is amazing. Some of his lines in this I, I don't know the actor actually. Who who is what is the actor? Let's have a guess who would be. I'm not too sure, but he does a very, very good job as the villain. General Quok. 
um, he's fantastic. Whoever plays him, he's brilliant. And it's really, I, I, I actually prefer this. It's one of, my, it's actually my favourite missing action. It's crazy. I, I, I love all, all, all three of them. This film is one of my favourite Chuck films. It's probably this or the Hitman to my favourite all time. But I think most people would say it's one of the best. Invasion USA. Just look, just so special. One of my favourite. I mean, Christ, sometimes I get reviews of this. I swear people are just so fucking retarded. I just can't... Sometimes bringing up all this... Look, we know it's jingoistic. We know it's pro-American. Look, it's a fucking film. Just get used to it. For Christ's sake, they're being invaded by <laughs> all of America's enemies in the 80s. It's fucking ludicrous. It's an action film. It's canon. Just, oh, just sit back and enjoy a film, for fuck's sake. So I was watching the reviews for London Has Fallen, which I loved, by the way. Just all these people, just, just all these PC pricks, just, oh, I'm offended. I don't give a fuck if you're offended. And if you get offended by this, you've really got to just a low tolerance. Just fucking man up, for Christ's sake. Cross spine. Matt Hunter. God, he's great in this. And Richard Lynch is just, just, I, I adore Richard Lynch so much. He's so fucking amazing in this. I just, the scene with Billy Drago and that prostitute, which is one of my, all oh, God. Oh man, it's just, it's great. And this is a great, oh, it's, oh, it's time. The ending is just, oh, it's so special. I love, I love Invasion USA. Uh, I picked up this from France. A lovely, it's, it's real nice edition. Um, short Norris collection. And I, unfortunately, it doesn't say what is in this. Oh God, I'm kind of stuck here. I'm going to see, which, does it, oh, there's annoying ones. Okay, what do we have here? We've got, I think Missing in Action's in here. I know Lone Wolf McQuaid's in there, which is underrated. I just wish... I know there was a bit of trouble between him and Carradine at the end of this. little bit of personality clashes, which probably explains the ending. Doesn't that really satisfying? Code of Silence, great one. Henry Silver. Oh, fuck. I can't remember the last one. There's another... Oh, God. What is it? What is the other one in here? Oh, God. I can't remember. I can't remember what the last one. There's another film in there. I know there is. I just can't remember what the hell it is. I, apologies on that. Um, God, what is it? I'm trying to think what it would be. Right, we've got a media book of Death Wish 5, Bronson. Really underrated one. I love all I love all the Death Wishes. I'm an absolute sucker, man. I just can't. I think the fourth is probably the weakest in part, but then it's got the amazing ending. Um... Yeah, this is an underrated one. I love. I, they could have just kept going. I mean, I, I love Chuck. No matter, you know, no matter what he does. Um, I picked up a few hour releases. Oh, I'm gonna get onto something else as well. Oh yeah, to hell with it. Yeah, I think I would. Oh, I can't remember his name. Okay, all right, right. We'll go, we'll go into this. Right. I've got Rage of Honor, Shokazugi. I think I've completed the, kind of most of the show films now. Good one. Underrated. I watched this the other day. It was very enjoyable. Chuck's partner gets killed. The villain in this is very... Uh, again, uh, I wish the, the villain got more of a brutal death, but you know what you're going to do? It's, it, you know, it was enjoyable. This is my... I had this on media book, and I, I had to pick this up. Again, it's one of my all-time... I think it's my favourite Show Kazuki film. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, Pray for Death. Something really special about this one. Uh... Oh man, James Booth in this. James Booth, I mean, a weird relationship with Canon and, well, martial arts films in general. You know, he he wrote, um. Oh, oh god. What's the film? Oh, d bloody hell. I forgot the film and I absolutely love it as well. God, not American. Oh god. It'll come to me in a minute. But yeah, um. Yeah, James Booth, it was a very really weird kind of relationship. You remember him, his most famous role is Hook in Zulu. He's the villain in this, he's absolutely uh, um, amazing. He wrote Avenging Force, that was it, and that's a brilliant one. Um, just so sadistic. What? Oh, God. I love just simple things, man. When you when Sho Kazugi's son gets run over, the dummy's head falls off. Just little things like that. So brutal. The fight, fair play to James Booth. I don't think he was a martial artist, but he really goes for it at the end. Sometimes, you know. Just he, had a, he has a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of passion in that final fight with Shokazugi. It shows best film uh, by my, I, I, in my opinion. I, I enjoyed it the most. Now I picked up this, and this is again. Oh, should I just have? Oh no no. I, 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 oh, I might. Right okay. It's uh, American Ninja Films. Um, I haven't seen two. Two is the one. That three and four. No, James Booth is in the fourth one, and he's got, he's got some funny lines in that. Three is very entertaining. 
And again, bro, we've got a book in here. I don't know who the guys who writes this, but... Oh, God almighty. You see these films here? Yeah? Right, they're films. It, it, it's an amazing thing. Sometimes we have to separate between fact and fiction. They're films. Enjoy the film. Don't look too much into the political side of things. We all know they're jingoistic. That's mostly what a lot of the canon films were in the 80s. The guy who writes the book for this... I'm not sure of his name. Um, he he goes on and on about it. It, it. It's like, mate, why are you bother watching the films if you hate them so much? I don't know. You, you know, there's you know studying film and that's fantastic, but it's like he just despises the films. They're, they're jingoistic canon films for fuck's sake. Well, I don't know what you're expecting. You know, <laughs> why are you surprised? Like just just reading the book, mate. It's like God Almighty. Like you could tell he'd be the sort of guy who'd love the sound of his own voice. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just it's not what we're talking about. It's all right. Um, but if, if the book really annoyed me, like, it was just, it was like, do you even enjoy the films? Um, anyway, I'll we'll get on to some criterions. Um, picked up uh, David Cronenberg's Scanners. Love this film. Love a lot of Cronenberg films. Scanners isn't my favourite Cronenberg film, but it's, it's, it's still amazing. Criterion did a fantastic job. Um, I might pick up Scanners 2 and 3 at some point. The beginning of the third Scanners always makes me laugh when the kid... It is the third film when he falls off the balcony, I'm sure it is. Now, this is my, one of my favourite Cronenberg films, um, The Brood. I'm not a massive fan of the cover, got to be honest, but uh, it's it's a real favourite of mine. I love Oliver Reed. I think it's one of his most underrated performances. It's absolutely fucking nightmarish film. Um so underrated as well I consider it truthfully one of the one of the best of the 70s and going up oh my god I mean when you I'm not going to go into the the depth of just brilliance of horror films of the 70s but it's it's a true it's it, it's some very oh very oppressive film um I love it I absolutely do I really do it's 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 a great film um and I, I'm going to revisit that film as well. I picked up a. I need to pick up the kid as well. But I picked up this um, Charlie Chaplin Modern Times. I know they're just a, just a wonderful. Film. I just it's something about Charlie's films, man. You know, just it's like when I watch City Lights. You know, just I've never one of the, you know. I mean, this is just this is an amazing film. I mean, City Lights is my all-time favorite Chaplin film. There's something so magical about him. So just unbelievably talented just it, it's just scary um it's a great film the, the way he can bring emotion to silent it, it's, it's just just fantastic it's particularly city lights as well you know when you you're watching the end of that you know he's disheveled as the cha tramp and oh god the emotion it brings up you know it's just he's just unbelievable just, I, I i i adore chaplin absolutely adore him um two films to end on one's a western might show I might show this first actually uh, it's a brilliant film studied actually uh, not a long time ago anyway when I was at uni but um, reading about the, the trial of um, Breaker Morant he was a uh, he was an Aussie I think he served in the Australian Light Horse or, or a, something similar to it and they'd bring a lot of the Australian Light Horse out to the Boer War in South Africa because the Australians were so used to <clears throat> used to that same sort of uh, same sort of terrain and the Boers and by about 1900 the Boers had uh, took the fight in the guerrilla war and uh, they were slowly uh, encroaching on the Boers slowly pressing them in and that's where they were bringing their families into concentration camps uh, and Breaker uh, was part of a unit and his commanding officer was killed and I think when they found him he'd been castrated I think if I remember there was a was there a German attaché to the Boer unit I think I think it was a German I'm pretty sure it was it was a German minister and and he was up with his Boer unit and they caught up with his commando unit and they, they executed a lot of them and Breaker was on trial with another man um, and many people believe that it was a bit of a stitch, jo stitch up job you know they wouldn't have convicted a British soldier of it but rather pick on a a colonial as it were with the Australians it's just it's just, it's amazing film honest to god it's <laughs> the acting is just beyond beyond belief Jack Thompson Edward Woodward Brian Brown this great film oh it's just, just great the ending's just uh, really emotional and just it's 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 great honest to god it's 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 a brilliant film I can't even I can't I can't sing its praises enough and the last one I always see this film as like a 
it's like an antithesis to, to shame really it's like it's like if shame was more nasty um yeah detected by Delma Davis Jabal um Ernest Borg 9 uh Glenn Ford Rod Steiger uh Glenn Ford's uh He says an honourable cattleman, but he's obviously done something beforehand. He's obviously had his had a past. Comes into this farmstead with uh, Ernest Borgnine, real lovable kind of guy. He's got a few car hands. His wife is a bit of a whore, really. Like she, it's pretty clear that she's got no real kind of integrity or honest or sort of loyalty towards Ernest, and uh, she takes a fancy to Glenn Ford and. Uh, it's like jealousy, Rod Steiger. You know he wants almost to be leader of the um, the car hands, um, and it's 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 nasty in places. It, it really is, and just the whole the whole thing. It's 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 a it's a real wonderful western. It's a lot like Shame, but but really more a lot more cynical, a lot more nihilistic western. Uh, it's yeah, it's it, it's really good. it's uh, it's really really good western I've, I've been watching I can't begin to how many westerns I've watched recently I've just been on a western kick just watching as many as I can and this one is a really special one it's uh it's going for such an underrated actor when you when you watch the original 310 to Yuma and then you see the shit remake oh just I mean how are you going to take Ford and Van Heflin and put him up against Russell Crowe and uh, oh god what is I can't think what else is in here actually, it's kind of... Um, Christian Bell. When you put those two, compare them to the original, there's just no contest, the original pisses all over it. Um, and just and Ernest as well, such an such an underrated actor, he's so good in this. I'll tell you, there's something about Ernest, man, just, uh, he's just special. So yeah, look, that's the end of the update. Thank you for watching.